Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on the world of big data. Today, my guest is from Tableau Software. We have Ellie Fields. Ellie, welcome to the show today. Hey, Rich. Thanks for having me. You bet. Thanks for coming on. You know, Ellie, you've got an announcement coming up here, and uh, I'm wondering if you could give me the, the you know, the 10,000 foot. What are you guys announcing this week? Yeah, we're announcing Tableau Online, which is a hosted version of Tableau Server. And what's exciting about it is it lets anybody have a, a full BI platform, a full business intelligence platform in the cloud. So it's it's our hosted version of uh, of our market-leading software, our software that, that a lot of people use already. And with a simple request, you can go and get a site, click in and create a site for sharing dashboards, analytics, and data in the cloud. Okay. Can you uh, show me how it works? So what, what I'll do now is I'm in a web browser, um, and I'm just going to go to online.tableosoftware.com, which is our hosted solution. Whoops. Um, and you'll see the login screen here. And I can simply log in. Now, I'm a member of many sites. I'm a member of three different sites. So you'll see this thing asking me which site I want to go to. Most people won't see that. They'll go straight to their own site. And I just click OK. And I come in. And what you see here is basically um, Tableau Online. And all of these are my workbooks. Um, I've got workbooks on bird strikes and so on. I've got a number of projects that I can use. And I can provision this site simply by going and requesting uh, requesting a trial from Tableau, and they'll send me an email to uh, to sign up, and, and I click through, and, and I'm in. Um, I can add users right over here by adding someone and adding their email address. That person will then get an email saying, click click here to be added to your site, and then they will, they will be added. Um, and I can use this site to go and browse content. So let's go into a project, a um, bunch of things that I've built specifically for the iPad. So these are a number of workbooks that, uh, that um, I've published at different times. And right in a web browser, I can go into one of these, and I can say, um, let me take a look at this dashboard, and let me do some, uh, let me do some filtering. So this is what a user might do. Um, Maybe I'm a sales manager and I'm out, out uh, selling somewhere and I'm looking at uh, how the different regions are performing. And I can zoom in on, a, on another date, look at it that way. And then all of my views in this case will update. And I can go and get some customer detail. I can even hook this data into Salesforce. I haven't done that in this case. But I can look very quickly on a map and say, hey, where, where are my sales? It looks like I've got a lot of sales of uh, restaurants along the coast and less so inland here. I've got a lot more distributors and more restaurants because I can see that yellow color here and the blue color here. And again, I can, I can zoom in to, uh, to maybe the current year. Um, and uh, again, we're looking at the east here. Um, if I want to, I can just type these in here. But you get the idea. I can go ahead and look for a certain customer. And this is the kind of dashboard you might provide to somebody on the road dealing with sales every single day. Um, and there are a number of, of different views that you might provide out to, uh, to people in your organization. This is all secure. I had to log in to get here. Every workbook can have its own permissions, as can every data source. So Tableau Online isn't just a place to put dashboards and workbooks like, uh, like these. I can even look at data sources. And so data sources are, um, data sources are actually published data sources where I can come in here and, uh, and see how often they've been refreshed. This is one that's actually based on um, Excel data. So we won't, we won't uh, see any refresh on that, but I can see a Google Analytics connection here. I can see um, sales and orders and details, and I can see when all of these were last refreshed. And so that's, that's a pretty powerful way to, uh, to let people use data as well, to not just publish the dashboard, but to publish a data source that other people can then go into and modify. And in fact, here's one that was published today, and uh, you, you can see you can see that that's um, got an incremental refresh and a full refresh schedule defined. And so then the question is, of course, how do we get um, how do we get data into Tableau Online? And so let's take a look at that. Tableau Desktop is the primary way to get data into Tableau Online, and uh, in Tableau Desktop, this is where you can make all of your connections. So what I've done here is I've just um, – one second, let me expand the screen here. What I've done here is I've 
just hit connect the data dialog. And this is the place that shows me all the different places that I can that I can connect to. So I've got uh, data extracts, Microsoft Access, Excel, text files, and a, a number of different um, relational data sources from Hadoop to BigQuery to Google Analytics, some of the ones that we were talking about a few minutes ago. And I can connect to any of these. Uh, one that I've just connected to is an Excel file with some World Bank indicators in it. And I can go ahead and, and take a look at that data source simply by right-clicking on it. And the, the powerful thing about Tableau is that I can simply drag out some measures and start to interact with them. So I might want to look at uh, GDP. I can simply double-click and I can see the GDP of all the world over this time range, which isn't that useful because it's an aggregation. But if I start dragging out the year of date, into the columns, I can see how GDP has gone up and down. And you can actually see the 2009 uh, financial crisis and recession right here in, in that dip there. Um, maybe I can drag out region and look at it that way. And I can even um, make this an area chart. And I could even drag country and put it into detail here. And you can actually see all of the different countries. And so in the Americas, if I wanted to look in the Americas, the large one here, of course, would be the United States. And we can look at some of the other large ones here. We've got Japan and China, and they're all colored by region. I'll, I'll do uh, one other quick analysis, and then we'll, we'll look at publishing to Tableau online. So one other thing I might want to do is I might want to look at um, ATMs versus banks. And uh, again, we see a little scatter plot here. I'm going to go ahead and put country into detail and color it by region again. Just drag region onto color. And you can see the, the kind of powerful analysis you can do here. It's all drag and drop, point and click. It's something that any business user could do. And I'm going to add population to this one. I'm going to drag population from the data window, which is showing me all the data that I had in my Excel sheet, and put it on the size shelf. And so now I can see which countries are more likely to have uh, banks than ATMs and ATMs than banks, and I can see that size by population. And if I preferred to see that size by GDP, I could do that as well. So let's go up to GDP. And instead of sizing by population, I'll just drag GDP onto, uh, on, onto the canvas. Let me add a quick trend line. Um, and I can show a trend line by every region. And then I'll simply create a dashboard here of the two, the two sheets that we created. And I could, I could clean this up a little bit, make this a little bit um, more beautiful. But uh, this is all configurable. This is all editable. You can see how quickly you can create a dashboard as a, as a business user. And so that, now that I've got my, my workbook here, I'm going to go ahead and save it. Save it in documents. And I'm going to publish it up to the server. So to publish it to Tableau Online, all I do is I simply hit Server Publish Workbook. Um, let me log off so you can see me log in. Um, Publish workbook. I'm going to put that same URL I put in before, online tableau software.com. Let me add my um, my password here. And again, choosing a site is something most people won't have to do because they'll only have one. And I can simply say this is World Bank Info and um, choose the sheets I want to publish and publish it up. And now this is sending that data up to our hosted cloud service. I can go ahead and, and look at it um, in Tableau Online. Uh, let, me, let me go ahead and filter to anything published today. And you'll see this book that we just published right here um, just a minute ago. Let me expand this over here. You'll see this book, and I, I can do things like um, look at the different regions and get my tool tips and so on. And in this case, I didn't add filters and, and make this terribly interactive, but we could go do that uh, and, and make it look like the daily sales dashboard with different filters. But the process of publishing workbooks and data is just as simple as that. You, you simply create what you want in Tableau Desktop and publish it up to the server. And somebody working with this on a mobile device could even come in here and edit this workbook and, uh, and make some changes. So perhaps uh, the person I publish this to wants to go back to that population instead of GDP on size. Right here in a web browser, we've got that same capability to drag population onto size and drop it there. And now you can see that that view updated. And I could, I could save that. 
Now, again, all of this is done with, with permissions. I can define groups who can see this dashboard or certain individuals. I can let people do this web editing feature or not do this web editing feature. It's a, it's a fully functional BI platform with all the permissions and security you would expect. Uh, but it's right in the cloud. It's hosted right in the cloud. And we think this is going to improve the access for people who either want to move quickly or don't have access to IT for whatever reason. Um, we're gonna, this is going to improve the, the access to, uh, to analytics greatly. So that's, that's what I wanted to show you. I uh, would, love, would love to take any questions or show you anything else that you're interested in. Sure, sure. Uh, thanks for that, Ellie. So uh, I'm curious about the genesis of Tableau Software. Where did you guys come from and, and how did it get started? So S S Tableau was born at Stanford. It was a PhD project by Chris Stolte, who's our current chief technology officer, and he was working with Pat Hanrahan, who is a brilliant computer science professor at, uh, at Stanford and has worked on a lot of projects, including Pixar. Um, and they had this idea that, uh, you know, computer graphics were advancing so much. They had this idea, what if you could use graphics to interact with data? Because the, the interfaces that were around at the time were, were these very um, uh, uh, text-based things like, uh, you know, different prompt-based systems and, and SQL and queries that you had to kind of know what you were looking for before you went in. And they came at, at analytics from this computer graphics-oriented world, and they said, what if you could just graphically or interact with your data. And why that's so powerful is because as human beings, we, we naturally absorb data in a graphical way. And there's something we talk about, which is the cycle of visual analysis, which is that every time you see data, it, it engenders more questions. And uh, when you're answering a question, you do a number of things. You go find data to answer that question. You look at different views of data. Some may be interesting, some may not. When you find an interesting view, you may dig deeper. You may go to a colleague and say, hey, look at what I found. What do you think about this? They may have another perspective that causes you to go out and get more data and create more views. So the, there's this exploration process when you see data visually. And um, that's been really the power of Tableau. And that, that was the core idea that was the PhD thesis that grew out into a company. Christian Chabot was, uh, was the third founder who came on and uh, is, of course, now the CEO. And ever since then, the company's been working towards that same main idea. You know, Ellie, I, I've been looking at some of the, the side topics you have there, and it occurs to me that you don't have to be like an Excel uh, genius to um, use these tools, right? I mean, that seems to be what it was in the past. You had to really know uh, the tool inside and out to be able to get uh, uh, powerful, persuasive charts. And I'm looking at these topics, like you, you might have doctors looking at this or people in, in healthcare or the military, that they're, that's not their specialty, right? But, uh, but they might still want to gain insight from yeah. their information. So was that the idea? Yeah, that's absolutely the idea. And, and there's been some numbers thrown around, like, you know, BI systems have reached 8% of people in an organization. And, um, yeah, I mean, typically you've had to be some kind of an expert. You've taken weeks and weeks of training courses, or maybe it's your main focus, or maybe you're an Excel guru. But uh, but today everybody has to deal with data, and it's really important for everyone to deal with data. So everybody that you mentioned, from doctors to military people to surgeons, are using Tableau. So it, you know we have we have uh, surgeons and nurses looking at the data, saying, hey, how can how can we use our resources better? How can we look at the clinical data coming back to improve our care? One of my fav favorite stories is actually Spokane Public Schools. And uh, they have teachers and administrators looking at the data. And what they're trying to do is they're, they're actually looking at data about um, dropout rates. They've created an early warning system so they know that when certain indicators go together, like um, somebody starts skipping a lot of class and they start failing at least one subject, they know that that person has a very high um, probability to drop out within a couple of years. So they're trying to to use data to actually intervene in the lives of students and help them uh, at the point when something starts going wrong in their life to help them get back on track so that they don't drop out later. So yeah, we've got teachers and doctors and military people and, um, and even normal business people who didn't consider themselves data experts going and working with data because today data touches every, everything that we do. You know, it's, it's rare that you have someone in your organization that you don't want to be looking at some kind of data. Right. Uh, we have people showing data um, on, on the shop floor to, to shop floor employees who are machining parts. And, uh, and those folks want to know, you know what the throughput's looking like and what their backlog is and which part they need to start on, on next. And, and uh, analytics helps them do that. 
Well, great. Well, Ellie, kind of a wrap-up here. I mean, with this announcement, being able to access this over uh, the web, um, how easy is it to kick the tires on this and see if Tableau is right for me? You know, it's very easy. You can uh, you can go to our website, and you can go to the Tableau online product page and uh, and request a trial, and we'll get back to you uh, within within a couple of days, usually very quickly, but but we say a couple of days just to be sure. And you'll get an email, and you click into that email, type the name of your site. You just have to name your site. That's all you have to do. And then you get in there and start adding users. And then you can get a free trial of Tableau Desktop right off our website and connect the data, create some dashboards, publish those up to Tableau Online, and, and you've started sharing live interactive dashboards. Very cool. Well, Ellie Fields, I want to thank you once again for uh, coming on the show today. Yeah, it was a pleasure, Rich. Nice to talk with you. You bet. Okay, folks, that's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on the world of big data.